And of course, uh, thank you to uh, Rodrigo and uh, everybody at CMAS for, and the British Council for making it possible for me to be here as well. Um, it's really wonderful to be here in Moravia for the first time. Um, so today, um, I've titled my talk, Hidden Sounds, Field Recording and Responses to Climate Change. And I'm going to be talking about uh, my practice um, of field recording, uh, but some of the work that I've been doing in the past couple of years, which has uh, stemmed from my practice as a field recorder and has led to me uh, undertaking a number of pieces that have been inspired, have been responses to, or have been about uh, climate change. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to share with you today is um, some of the, the uh, uh, research that I've been uh, doing uh, at a, uh, an experimental forest uh, outside Birmingham. Um, and uh, it's, a, um, it's a, a, an amazing space uh, that's associated with the University of Birmingham called BIFOR, which is the Birmingham Institute of Forest Research. Um, and it's an old oak forest that uh, has, it, they're undertaking a 10 year longitudinal study on the effects of uh, CO2 in, um, in oaks. Um, the, the work that they're doing there, and I'll just uh, stick the poster here so you can have a look, um, it's what is called the CO2 enrichment facility. Um, and it has, as you can see, uh, these tall towers, 102 of these 25 meter tall towers, which are treating patches within the forest with CO2, which has uh, been, in, it's enriched air, uh, so there's more CO2 in it than we would normally have, and replicating what's predicted to be mid-century atmosphere. Um, so by doing that, they're undertaking uh, a lot of measurements, and they're measuring everything they possibly can, um, from the width of the tree stems, the size, the weight, and the chemical makeup of leaves, the branching architecture of the roots, and much more. Um, and the aim is to record the changes in forests um, and how they manufacture things, how the, how the forest manufactures stuff and, and its general health. Um, so I'm going to kick off here with actually handing over uh, to the researchers that are doing this because they put together a very nice video uh, last year uh, that gives you a, a really nice insight into the forest um, so you can get more of an idea of, of what's going on there. And then I'll share with you uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing in there in terms of uh, recording. Um, uh, hopefully, this will work. So it does depend on good internet access. It's a very unique site. It's the only one in, in the northern hemisphere that it's studying mature woodlands. It's very unique. No one else, or I think very few people, have the opportunity to actually measure an entire forest from one meter down all the way up to 20, 30 meters up. We're in the University of Birmingham's free air carbon enrichment facility, which means we're in an old, mature, semi-natural, a bit disorganized forest um, in central England, 
that we are subjecting to a very special kind of experiment. So when these big oak trees that we're standing amongst, when they were saplings, there were only 285, 290 units of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now it's well beyond 400, climbing rapidly. And what we're doing with our experimental manipulation is we're adding another 150 units above that. Because pretty much no matter what we do, we are going to reach that level before we start all our actions uh, in decarbonizing our society. All those actions begin to bring the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere down. We're asking the question, how will the whole forest respond? That's why you see so many different measurements taking place around us because we're not interested just in how a leaf responds or even a whole huge oak tree responds. We're interested in how the forest as an ecosystem responds. Every terrestrial ecosystem on the planet is underpinned by insects. You take them away and the ecosystem collapses. So I'm a forest entomologist, which means I'm interested in insects and other arthropods which live in forests. So in a forest environment like this, they're, if anything, more important because there's so many different processes going on, um, nutrient flow, um, all the water regulation, uh, herbivory, pest control, pollination, all of these ecosystem processes rely on insects. Soil is life. Without it, we have nothing. Without the soil, we don't have the trees. We don't have the insects, we don't have the birds, the animals. We don't have nothing. It's life. It is very special. Um, we are powerless here. We just, you know, we feel humble that the forest allows us to, to do whatever we want. I am very proud of my job. Every point along the way, it's measured. It's brilliant. It's overwhelming to see nature doing its own thing, and it's beautiful. I feel what I'm doing here has an importance. Someone, something might happen because of what we're doing here. It was a, uh, it was quite a, an amazing experience going there for the first time because um, I was perhaps a little bit naive thinking I can go and make some really amazing recordings of forests um, and then walking in and realising that I was in some kind of futuristic industrial style experiment and that the soundscape was not the kind of soundscape that I would normally go out and record if I'm thinking I'm going to go and sit in a woods. and. Um, uh, Yes, so I, I had an initial visit, but then um, then we had the pandemic. And then I, um, after the, well, maybe about 2021, 20, um, I managed to spend a, a few days there in, in the summer. And it's sort of the start of a, a, a longer project. Um, uh, but being able to go and uh, start taking some recordings, um, uh, exploring just the um, open air recordings that I, I could do within the space, uh, it is an experiment, so there were a lot of limitations as to where I can put my feet and where I can put my microphones, but at the same time, they are um, a really uh, generous uh, research group who uh, you know, will bend over backwards to help me do things if, um, if, I, uh, if I want to, if I have ideas. And, um, uh, 
but sort of just heading back to the, the title, Hidden Sounds, um, I started doing a lot of exploration with um, uh, hidden, um, to, to explore the hidden sounds that we can't hear. So um, uh, working with contact microphones uh, to just explore the structures, the, the, the actual uh, man-made structures that were within there, but also obviously the natural structures and the, the trees especially. And it's, it's very much a work in progress. Um, I'm uh, looking to try and do a longer term uh, project actually recording uh, uh, sap within trees. Um, I've started this, I've done some experiments, I've got some sounds, but I know I can get better. So there's, um, there's quite a lot of work for me to do um, there. But also um, just digging into every little corner of the forest that I could find. Um, and I think as you, you see in that video that obviously forests and uh, they're not just trees, they're everything. Uh, the whole ecosystem um, is is so very important. So uh, the directions that I've been going are um, looking to go up into the canopy, but also down into the soil um, as well. And I've begun uh, working with soil a bit more, um, but not yet at Bifor. And so that's the, the next stage. And, and next year I'm hoping to, um, I have some research lead and I'm hoping to spend a lot more time there to do further um, explorations. Um, in terms of um, <laughs> what they're uncovering, because of the, it's a longitudinal study, it's taken me a long time to get any results, but I thought I would just share that uh, in October 2021 20, is when the, the first results were in, so quite recently. And what it's showed so far is that photosynthesis is a third higher in the canopy, um, particularly on sunny summer days. And over a growing season, that an increase is about a fifth. Um, and as uh, Rob says when he discusses this, if you think about your salary increasing by a fifth, you can imagine how big that actually is. <laughs> um, the, um, the forest that's exposed to higher CO2 appears happy and healthy um, and productive and because plants love CO2. Um, but the forests are not being nurtured. They have to fend for themselves. So all the nutrients that they need to balance the CO2, so to offset it all, they have to get from the earth um, on which they're standing. So there's, there's implications. So what looks great, obviously there are further implications into what it's actually doing to the forest. And it was interesting the last time that I went there, there was a conversation about reforestation and, and planting trees. And um, there's a lot of science behind it. But what we might think are the... The, uh, the answers to some of these problems are not. Um, I'm not going to start trying to quote anything there because I'm not a, a scientist and I don't think it's a good false fact here. Um, the extra CO2 that the, the trees have is photosynthesized into sugar. And uh, as with anything, too much of a good thing can lead to an imbalance. Um, and diet say, just think about what happens to us if we eat too much sugar. Um, so uh, so clearly there's, there's huge effects ha happening on the trees. Um, although you know they they they're healthy and they're happy, there are there are implications. Um, so um, I'm just going to share a few of my photos and a couple of videos about from my my recording trip. Um, the one on the left there, you can see this. It's a microphone up in uh, in one of the platforms and. For this, I used a, um, that's an Ambio Sennheiser ambisonic uh, microphone. So while I'm there, I've been doing all sorts of different types of recordings from stereo to ambisonic 360 degrees to the uh, hidden sounds as well. On the right, um, it's quite difficult to see, but what I've got set up there is I've got two contact mics um, nestled inside the dead wood. Um, and, but outside of that on the top, I've also got uh, two small DPA uh, omnidirectional microphones, which are recording the soundscape. So uh, tr in, in the recording, trying to see if there's a, a correlation with what I'm hearing on the, uh, what I'm hearing with my ears and what's going on inside. Um, and I'm not sure that there, there was when I, when I listened back. Uh, that recording was maybe only about 20 minutes. So um, I like to uh, find a way to set up for a bit longer. Um, which I'd like to do there, and I've got some plans, but um, there are also access issues and um, uh, in, so, in some ways, but it's quite a good place to leave equipment, which is a good thing. Um, I forgot to say when I was uh, talking about space, so one of the uh, uh, ridiculous, well, kind of feels ridiculous things about that is that they, to, to run, they have to have 
a, a massive tank of CO2 delivered every day. Um, and it's such a, such a huge operation. Um, but they've also been feeling the effects of, of shortages and Brexit and being able to have um, uh, access to things and the cost of living as well because prices have, have gone up. But fingers crossed they can keep running the experiments, I think. Um, uh, so this is just uh, one of the uh, platforms that you can walk around. So the forest, to, to get around the forest, you have to not be walking on the ground because there are probes everywhere. Um, so uh, inside and uh, in the ground, in the trees, they capture all the leaf fall. So uh, what you would, where we would see a piece of forest that we would normally walk through, you have to be really careful. Um, but there's certain areas that you, you can and, and can't go. Um, and surrounding the, the whole forest are these massive pipes that you see on the left um, uh, that are taking the CO2 from uh, the entrance or all the way around to, um, to the, the, uh, the masts, so they're called. Um, and that's just a little video of me walking by. I want to hear more bird song in this video. Um, and then um, this is a, 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 you'll hear a bit of this recording um, in a moment. Uh, this is a, the Ambio again, but um, there, are, there are 10 arrays within the forest. Uh, five of them are the experiment and five of them are a control array. So they're doing a complete control experiment of um, just pumping in normal air into, a, into uh, the canopy. Um, so you can enter these arrays, and then the experiment is there. Um, and I was I was there one time, and it was just me and the technicians. So sometimes you go down there, in, you know, with the intention to record, but there's PhD researchers hanging out of trees. So <laughs> it's quite you've got to be quite careful with um, what you can do, um, and mindful of all the other research that's going on there. Um, but on this day, uh, the technician, uh, it, it was a quiet day, and he said. You know, it sounds really amazing when you turn the generator off because it's, there's all this metal going through the forest and all these pipes. And when you, you turn it off, it, it turns off. But it's, as, as all the air releases, and, um, it's like an aeolian harp in the forest. Um, so he's like, why don't we do it? And I was like, sure. So I, I put the microphone in the, in the middle there. And I was like, I haven't got enough power. And then realized that, you know, it's, it's an experiment. There's power all over the place. Um, so it was it was really kind of him to to do that, and I'll I'll play you. I think I've got a snippet of it being turned back on again to play you in just a moment. Um, uh, yeah, and um, and it also features in in the piece I'm going to perform uh, later. Um, and then this final uh, it's just a little video inside the array. To And then this is uh, just some of the, uh, the later tr uh, experiments with uh, contact microphones in trees um, and trying to scrape uh, some of the bark off because actually to, to get any sound, you need to get under the bark. Um, but we can't go. We, there's, there's a, this poor tree is the experiment tree that we can go and play around with a bit because some of the trees within the experiment, we're not allowed to probe and we're not allowed to tangle with. Um, but and that's the technician Nick there who is uh, kindly straightening yeah, it. Kill the tree, yeah. Removing bark. Okay. Um, so yeah, so um, what am I doing with all these recordings? And it's a good question because uh, when I went, I went just for, out of curiosity. Um, and I thought it sounded like an amazing opportunity. And, and once I'd set foot there, I, I've been going back because I think it's a, uh, an amazing space. And I, uh, the, the research that they're doing there is incredible. Um, so I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and to begin with, um, I've, I've been doing various different projects and plan to do more. Um, but the first thing I, I did was um, a 10-minute soundscape, no, sorry, 18-minute soundscape um, to accompany a university exhibition called The Air We Breathe, which was exploring air pollution through the lens of University of Birmingham research. 
Um, and so this was an exhibition launching a new building that they they had. So it was uh, it was lovely to be asked to provide the sound um, for that. Um, and um, yes, and sort of the theme around that was what are the causes and effects of air pollution and how can we work together to improve the air we breathe. And um, having run around Morelia this morning, I, I'm even more passionate about <laughs> improving the air we, air we breathe. Um, so um, I've got a few samples here of, just so you can hear some of the things that I've made. Uh, with the, the overall soundscape, it's 18 minutes long, so um, I can share, if anybody's interested, I can share a, a link to it for you to listen to. Um, but I, I structured it in a way of, actually, I made recordings outside of the experiment as well. And so I, I started outside in just uh, a, one of the neighboring forests and then gradually moved into the experiment, into the, the soundscape, the kind of overbearing soundscape in, in many ways. Um, and then delved deeper into, um, well, I had to obviously include the, the generator being turned on and off and using that as an opportunity to go inside into the hidden sound. Um, I should also uh, say that the, uh, the experiment runs only when there's a canopy, so it's only six months of the year. So uh, there's, there's plans as well to, to get some of the soundscape when it's not running, but it will be winter, so it'll be a very different type of soundscape. So this is just the uh, part of the opening, um, about a minute into the, into it. showed you was the, the dead wood um, and um, yeah some of it seems to be sort of burnt at the moment.
the generator had been turned back on and uh, we can hear more from you. I'm quite interested in is obviously there's there is a lot of um there's a lot of nature there um birds that nest around there but I am interested in in actually what's happening to to them as well and it's not something I've started but um uh and uh, and particularly in those those months when the deferments are on and you know where are they going because that's quite a nice a type of landscape to, to live in um but there's definitely there's definitely still lots of wildlife there in Seal and Cajos and stuff that you can Birds here, but um, so uh, to use these materials more, I've I've been looking for ways um, a way in for me and and uh, uh, for those of you on the recording workshop, we were discussing sort of how do you go from uh, having your recordings to actually maybe composing with them or or recontextualizing them in, in other ways. Um, and I first started exploring them in 2021. I was invited to um, to perform at a Radio 3 new music show, um, a COP26 special, um, a, live, a live recording. And so I thought it was a great opportunity to start working with um, the Biofor sounds. Um, earlier in the year, I'd also uh, recorded a podcast with Claude Schreier um, discussing themes of climate guilt and climate anxiety. And these discussions had arisen um, from a workshop that he ran uh, when we ran an online feast festival in 2021 um, themed around climate and environment and uh, the pandemic. Um, and, uh, and yes, there was a workshop we had when some discussions arose um, and we had some really uh, thoughtful discussions around, you know, helplessness as artists and what can we do and is there any point and, you know, moving around, you know, feeling like a very, very small fish in a very, very, very large pond. Um, um, uh, but the, the discussion around climate anxiety, and you know, since then there's been lots more uh, discussion, you know, publicly about that uh, was, was something, and that and that's been the that's been the sort of the driver for for that performance, but also for the piece that you're going to hear um, this evening. Um, oh, I forgot to mention um, as well that um, uh, what else I'm doing at the forest. I, I have uh, Rob was talking about the stream box that he's been using, and um, I am. I have one that I'm trying to set up in the forest at the moment. Uh, we are encountering issues with university networks. <laughs> um, so, um, and uh, unfortunately, because I can't go there, I need to, I need to take a, a Raspberry Pi technician and somebody from Soundcamp out there, I think, to, to fix it because um, it's a, yeah, it needs, it, it's going to work and it's going to be amazing and it's going to come online. <laughs> but um, but it, it needs um, some more uh, development for it. Um, but yes, so uh, so this was the the new music show, um, and um, yeah, and and the piece that breathe is a piece that I'm performing later, which I composed in 2022. Um, so you'll be able to hear um, the not so jolly <laughs> piece that I'm presenting. Um, but uh, around the same time, um, I was approached by uh, a, a choreographer, dance film maker. Um, who I'd, I'd worked with, she's a filmmaker, and I'd actually worked with her on other projects as we were both brought in to do our jobs on theirs. And she told me she was working on, uh, she'd got funding for a piece around clean air, um, uh, and, which is called And Breathe, and um, it felt like a really good uh, piece to be involved in. I, I really liked the concepts of her piece. And, and because I was doing this work at Bifor, and, um, and I explained it to her, it seemed like a really good match. Um, so that has led me to some other climate-related pieces, and I'm going to share um, to in my last sort of ten minutes these two dance pieces that I've worked on. So the first is called Andrew, 
Um, and the second is called uh, Cultivate. Um, and I'll talk about them uh, soon, actually. Um, so, um, so Andreed is um, it was a dance film. It's inspired by the uh, clean air zone that was being fitted into Birmingham at the time. Um, and the fact that you know we live in a consumerist nation, and as a result of this, our CO two emissions have increased dramatically. Um, so it, it utilizes localized research from um, on the effects of CO two to the environment. So researchers in Coventry at the Centre for Agroecology, Water and Resilience, um, and um, and also reflected on Birmingham's plan to make a positive difference to uh, people's lives. Um, it's also cross generational, identifying the role of a uh, younger generation um, play in influencing change. Um, and in the piece, you, you follow the dancer through three landscapes across Birmingham. Um, and the movements are embodying the emotional and physical impact of CO2. Um, so for this piece, I worked with um, the dancer and the directors from quite an early stage um, in it, um, but beginning by improvising to music that I'd already composed. So actually, what one of the pieces it features is a piece called Class Links, which is um, based on industrial heritage in, in around Birmingham. Um, and uh, it worked really well with uh, the, the South Asian dancer um, and uh, the Katak style she was, um, she was using. But I also spent time on location. So you can see the scrap yards that we, um, we went to. Um, and we also went to our local hills and sort of filmed in, in the woods. Um, so I made recordings there, but I also used um, particularly the, the contact microphone recordings, the pipe recordings um, from Bifor to generate more material. And, um, you know, it hidden again comes, hidden in many ways, in a sense that you possibly won't even notice they're there, but it was really important for me and my creative process to have that connection and to have this tangible connection to, to the air and to some of the work that I've been doing. Um, the film uh, was released in, in 2021, so it was this, around the same time I was doing, it was for COP26, um, uh, so it was, it was screened there, but um, uh, it's gone to lots of independent um, film festivals and was nominated for Best Experimental Film at Berlin um, International Art Film Festival. Um, and over COP27, it was shown in the Resilience Hub there, so it's had really, um, uh, it's nice to see that it's had some real impact and it's getting some some airings there. So I'm going to share the whole film with you. It's about six minutes long um, and then I'll share the other one with you and then I'll keep quiet. Um, um, unless we run out of time. But I might steal some of this time that we need. Um, so I'll move up there.
Okay. Um, so, uh, oh, thank you. Um, then if, um, is it okay if I just have a quick look? Um, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. So then uh, in about September of 2022, uh, Sina got some, Sina Gonzo, the uh, director of the Production and Service Company, to do another film, the Top Gun film, Seven. Um, and that was Pacific. Um, so we had to produce this one very fast, um, and uh, it meant that there was no time for changing of plans, so plans had to change on the fly because we were experiencing very bizarre weather, um, which we had to perhaps go at. So, um, um, but this, this piece, has, uh, it's got two dance crew, so it's grounded upon Dorothy Richards, who was a singer, um, for their dance and a duet, and again told you uh, about a phase one dance that highlighted my dream for Sina to have an actual dance phase one and saw the sequel to the film in it. Um, very briefly, um, some of the research that went into this piece uh, concluded the work of Bandana Shiva, uh, an Indian scientist, um, a biodiversity scientist who studies the global food supply and has won some Emmys for that. Um, and uh, she uh, leads some sort of pyramid oil field film. Um, and the talk that she gave in 2017, she talked about the Indian concept of Rishi, um, which means the right way, um, and working to keep, and the right way is to work in line with the planet, Earth, and the universe, and perhaps humanity. Um, Rutta appeared in Richmond, which is a book by now. And when we destabilize the Earth, we put part of the food we are living out of the planet in terms of the Earth boundary to limit both food and um, human living. Um, so she talks about, she says we need to start talking about climate change and how to do these things. Um, she also talks about climate chaos, working under climate change. Um, and climate justice means that we have to make a decision to make today because there's, 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 no, there's no way that we um, climate change is compensated for down to the carbon source. Um, and she perhaps sort of um, echoes some of what we heard in Dorothy Richards' talk and says, well, it's the, the ones who suffer the most are the ones who are the most impacted by climate change. Um, she also promotes agroecological practices, and that goes back to the, the soil. Um, and uh, we also looked at the Sadhguru and the Save the Soil movement in India, which has been running for 25 years to enshrine soil regeneration into every government in the planet. Um, and uh, he says, soil is wealth, a legacy we have received from previous generations that we have to pass on to future generations. And um, again, you know, uh, Sound wise, I, I was already interested in recording soil. I'm, I'm interested in for many reasons, but I think, again, just sort of thinking back to the, the workshop when we were discussing this yesterday, the fact that when we start listening into the soil, we also hear how much the soil is, the stress the soil is being put under. Um, uh, so, um, conscious of time, um, I started exploring soil recordings in, in 2022 um, when uh, I got some very nice microphones to do that. Um, and uh, started that uh, actually in the recording project for Matiranees last year. Um, but the recordings that you hear in, the in the, this dance piece are from my own back garden. Um, so uh, the score is made from uh, soil recordings, from pestle and mortar recordings, and also uh, from the uh, sitar recordings from a sitar player, Kabi Singh, who, who lives in Birmingham, who I actually used some of his work in a previous project. So um, this is just four minutes. I'll play this, and then that will be the end of my talk for so now. Thank you very much for listening, um, and I will uh, yeah enjoy the film and hopefully come and listen to the piece tonight as well.
Muchas gracias. Lamentablemente no tenemos tiempo de preguntas, pero bueno.